So, we're just not going with the chronological approach then? Alright, welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we are counting down our picks for the top 10 video game franchises with messed up timelines. You know our story now, of how we tried, of how we failed, all our hopes extinguished. Do you want a more in-depth discussion of this topic? Check out our podcast where the team dives into the list and gives their expert commentary. Think of it like a director's cut, but of a Watch Mojo video. Check it out in the link below. For this list, we're taking a look at the game series, grand and modest alike, which have found themselves burdened with overly complicated and hard to parse canon. Get ready for all manner of head spinning, timey wimey spoilers down the line. I'm Todd Habercorn, who is the perfect ambassador to deal with timelines because time and I are like carbon and monoxide. We're a perfect combo. I'm so involved with time, I have a piece of technology on my wrist that tells me what time is up to any time I look at it. Let's get ready to mojo! I tried and I failed them. I left them all to die. Number 10, Prince of Persia. I'm there! Starting off as a series of side-scrolling platformers, the Prince of Persia games weren't exactly exercises in complex storytelling. There's an evil vizier, he's kidnapped a princess, and he goes and saves her. The Mario Brothers plot points are strong here. However, this changed in 2003 with the reboot, The Sands of Time, which not only introduced time travel as a central element, but also started its own separate continuity from the classic games. Two main sequels later, fans were faced with yet another reboot, the 2008 Prince of Persia game, that set up its own version of the prince with a new mythology to match. Oh, I was on my way home. I had more gold than you could. I'd have had wine, women. I'd have had carpets this thick. And that's without getting into the inexplicable return to the Sands of Time canon that was 2010's The Forgotten Sands. Raise your hands if that made sense to you. Yeah, me either. Oh, put your hand down, troll in the back of the room. I'm starting to feel that the odds in this battle are not in our favor. Number nine, Deus Ex. Hello, Adam. I knew you would find the real me eventually. Naturally, a series focused on convoluted schemes and interconnected conspiracies would also have an appropriately hard-to-follow timeline. You know, just for a maximum confusion chimichanga. Deus Ex arrived on the scene boasting many an innovative feature, including its integration of moment-to-moment -moment player choice into the overarching narrative. This also tied into the game's endings, which varied based on certain late-game decisions, and which began the franchise's enduring trouble with canon. We are the Invisible Hand. We are the Illuminati. We come before and after. The immediate sequel, Invisible War, opted to treat all the endings as having occurred while also moving the action ahead another 20 years. Human Revolution, meanwhile, is a prequel set 25 years before Deus Ex and boasts its own set of outcomes to be retconned or ignored. Time is in the eye of the beholder. That's how the saying goes, right? We can become the gods we've always been striving to be. We might as well get good at it. Number eight, God of War. You have disrespected the gods for the last time, Kratos. Ah! Hacking your way through the Greek pantheon has never been quite so hard to follow. It didn't begin that way, though. When God of War launched in 2005, it was a self-contained narrative about the tormented warrior Kratos, striving for freedom from his debt to the gods. Death would be his escape from madness. God of War 2 brought time travel into the fold, but the canon was all well and good. We can win the Great War, but not in this time! At least until the prequels and interquels came along, Chains of Olympus jumped back into Kratos' decade of servitude, then came the further set sequel God of War 3, followed by Ghost of Sparta, tying together the original game and Betrayal. Keep your convoluted timeline. We just came to slay monsters and bear witness to the Kratos gun show. It was empty. Pandora was sacrificed in vain. She died because of my need for vengeance. 
Number seven, Bioshock. That's her. Embracing both the nuances of its underwater city locale and a quietly thoughtful deconstruction of certain philosophical views, Bioshock is far from simple in concept or execution. Yet, despite its component parts, the first and second installments in the Bioshock franchise managed to be compelling without twisting their timeline into knots. That changed with Bioshock Infinite, which not only took the action to an earlier time period, but also brought dimension traversal into the series' mythos. While the convoluted connection was not without merit, this had the unfortunate side effect of forcing explanation after explanation to clarify how Infinite related to the 1960s set game, which was eventually wrapped up with the Burial at Sea expansion, now on sale in the PlayStation Store for a dollar. Haha, <laughs> I made you look. You, you went to the store, didn't you? Elizabeth. Child. I am so sorry. Now you're you're about to be. Number six, Resident Evil. Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it. Don't open that door. To think this madness all began with one really cool idea. Back in 1999, Capcom opted to return Resident Evil 3 to Raccoon City, justifying this by having the game take place before and after the events of Resident Evil 2. Unfortunately, the Resident Evil series took to this concept with reckless abandon, finding ways to either go back to Raccoon City circa 1998 or put subsequent games in between earlier ones. There's the retcons and continuity errors of the Chronicles games, the midquel antics of RE Revelations and its sequel, and then there's straight up non-canon entries like Operation Raccoon City. Capcom is clearly quite enamored with timeline hopping, or they just love raccoons. BRB, I gotta go watch some baby raccoon videos on Instagram. <laughs> it's been 94 minutes since Chris and Jessica dropped off the radar. But the interpolation from their last known coordinates puts them Right here on this ship. Number five, Assassin's Creed. In theory, this Ubisoft-produced series with a rotating cast of principled ninja-esque killers is fairly linear in its progression. Rarely does Assassin's Creed deviate from its constant forward movement through its own chronology, with even the occasional jumps to modern-day assassin business being reasonably well handled. However, matters are less clear-cut when it comes to the backstory, a tangled web of centuries-old feuds and ancient civilizations that remains enigmatic at best. The rest is up to you. Desmond. What? Who is Desmond? We're still not precisely sure what's happening with Juno, and the first civilization business has all but fallen by the wayside in favor of more Templar assassin conflict. Your friend the Magi may have been involved. Come out, if you wish to clear his name. Number four, Metal Gear. Who are you? Who am I? You're talking to yourself. Oh, Kojima-san. How you vex us so. 1987's Metal Gear and its sequel largely functioned as self-contained action stories. That all changed after the success of Metal Gear Solid, however, which set the stage for future sequels to jump back and forth in time. Pull out your pen and paper, it's time to crunch some data. Metal Gear Solid 2 takes place four years after its predecessor, but then Metal Gear Solid 3 jumped back to the 1960s. Still with me? Having second thoughts? No. This was then followed by Metal Gear Solid 4 leaping to the then future year of 2014, with the PSP title Peace Walker setting its action in 1974. The fact Metal Gear Solid 5 picked up just a few months after Peace Walker shows remarkable restraint. Snake! Snake! Now go! Let the legend come back to life. Number three, Kingdom Hearts. No matter where I go or what I see, I know I can always come back here. Right? Yeah, of course. Hearts, friendship, and stop and start storytelling? While the first Kingdom Hearts was a charmingly humble and unassuming crossover game, its sequels proceeded to toss away that aspect in favor of a more grandiose vision of franchise building. What this has meant is that each subsequent game is jumped back and forth primarily between two time periods, either years before Kingdom Hearts or sometime after Kingdom Hearts 2. 
As a direct result, the franchise's mythology and overarching questions have grown increasingly dense and harder to parse, to say nothing of the answers being saved for some later sequel. You know things have gone too far when newcomers are advised to start with titles like Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 and 2.5 re 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 Remix. Number two, The Legend of Zelda. Much of the Zelda franchise's history has been made up of distinct adventures, linked, pun totally intended, by way of sly nods, inside jokes, and of course, a familiar hero. <sighs> there wasn't a clear continuity to formally connect the games, though, until the release of Hyrule Historia. That reference book clarified that the events of Ocarina of Time split the Zelda continuity into three separate time streams, varying based on whether the green-garbed hero Link failed or succeeded. As much as we appreciate the cementing of popular theory into canon, this also means a lot more research and tracking of threads to understand what games matter to which timeline. Thanks, Nintendo. I'm still waiting for a sequel to Duck Hunt, dammit! It seems that my role is unfinished. There is still something I must do. Number one, Castlevania. Loss of love can make a man desperate. Desperate enough to do anything to bury the truth, to hide from its pain. For a franchise with such a fairly straightforward premise, Castlevania sure does love its time jumps. Right from the earliest games, this series about killing Dracula's minions with whips and magical weapons has indulged in sequels, prequels, and interquels. For example, the PS2 game Lament of Innocence takes place before the events of Castlevania III, which in turn occurs prior to the original game. Then there's the Lords of Shadow reboot, a quasi-spin-off series which reworks much of the existing mythos to a confounding and profoundly unexpected effect. We adore you, Castlevania, but damn it if your timeline plotting isn't bizarre as hell. Time to go get drunk off some holy water. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.